For ImportsioTopVelocity.net, do a biometric analysis here of Ryan. Take him out of his leg lift, okay? You know, leaning that hard back with the trunk, where your trunk is tilting back towards the rubber that hard, what it does is it makes it hard to continue to load into the drive hip. That drive hip gets pushed hard into abduction, and it makes it harder for you to keep falling forward and down. So you can see you're getting to this point here where you stop loading down and forward, meaning you're not flexing down anymore. You're already ready to drive because you can feel you're at the end of your hip abduction, and now you're just pushing out of it or you're reaching and opening and even now rotating out of it. So we need to work on loading into that hip. So you want to flex the hip as you come out of leg lift, keep your trunk more vertical, neutral, and see how as you move down, how much you can sit and flex into that drive hip. Then right before you're ready to open, about right here, we need to make sure we're still holding torsion under the shin or the, the femur is still externally rotated, and the shin is coming down linear like it is here with, while still holding torsion or external rotation. And then, then we can open and implement some drive because you can see as you open, the knee's pretty much just going down, the heel's even popping up, so there's not much drive. So if we look at the kinematic sequence at front foot strike, we can see that at landing, I like the fact the pelvis is rotating uh, a lot more than the trunk. But we can see positionally the trunk is definitely open. We want to be in this position, the trunk to still be closed and the hip, the hips driving the trunk. So you can see as you keep going forward, your pelvis keeps peaking and your pelvis peaks about right here. And then your trunk starts peaking. Let's see, keeps going way, way out here. Probably right after ball release, your trunk is peaking like way out here. So I like where the, the, the hip is peaking back here, the trunk is peaking there. That's that's good. It's just the hip peaks right here are pretty slow. Um, and then the trunk peaks at the end are actually, they're okay. They're a little better. Um, but uh, the initial peaks, the, the hip peaks need to be a lot more. That would also allow you to hold the trunk position back. So we can see... I like where the peaks are, and it's more than likely because as you go to pitch release, you start extending your front leg, which is great because that helps accelerate the end of rotation and the, and the acceleration of the arm. So you have a really good finish, and, and you don't even pull your glove that hard. You're just, it's really going into landing. You could do a better job of opening your hips, keeping your shoulders even closed longer. And that'll make your finish even better. And because the hip or the because the, the back leg just kind of lays down and that glove does go a little early, I wouldn't say you pull it too hard, but it does go early, your trunk and your trunk's open, so your, your arm's a little late in cocking and laying back. So at this point here, the elbow is behind the back, and that's what we call hyperangulation. So that's an arm drag movement, and that's harder on your arm. And then you can see from this position, you pull and you adduct it out in front of your face a little bit here. So, the, you know, the, what puts the stress in the UCL is from horizontal abduction to adduction with the elbow. And you can see that's where you're accelerating a lot. We can see the right there, the, the line starts to go red on your arm acceleration. So ideally, we need to do a better job initially to not land with the trunk open where we can still even have the glove up and the hips are driving and we get, uh, we, which gives the arm time to keep up with the trunk movements. So that would be an important factor on health. And then even to the same thing with velocity, because the more back leg drive as opposed to just rotation, the more peak of momentum, the more energy that'll move up the body into the kinetic chain. I mean, you can even look at when you get to lay back, the trunk orientation is about 46 degrees, which is elite, it's ideal. So you really have a good finish. It's just trying to get initially 
more energy into the system. And that's what the back leg does. It propels energy in and also a little bit more delay in the trunk to keep the arm, uh, allow the arm to sink up better and it'll, it'll be perfect. And then from there, it's just, it's your size. It's as you grow bigger, stronger, faster, and more mobile that you can maintain these mechanics as you move into a bigger size.